connection. Do you see the ACF? It cuts off after lag one, indicating MA1. But take a look at the PACF. Okay. The PACF actually cut off at lag one and at lag three. Now, how do I know? See, after lag one, this go to zero. Uh, after lag, this is lag one, right? This the other one go to zero. But look at lag, look at this lag. It's it's out, right? So it's that one is suggesting um a arrow of order one and a arrow of order three. How many potential modules do we have right now as suggested by these two plots? ME1, AR1, AR3. Do you know this is this is what you are likely going to see in a real life data? Okay, in a real life data, it's never going to suggest at times it's never going to suggest one model for you. Okay, and that is why all the time after you are done with the ACF, I mean after you are done with the time plot. You know, I first of all start, started by generating time plot. The reason why I generated a time plot is just for me to be able to know whether stationarity has option hold. Does that make sense? And when I, when I saw that there was a downward trend, like there was a violation of a constant mean, what did I do? I difference. Okay? When I, I difference to like one, false. Because at times it may, you know, I mean, uh, if 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 differential to lag one does not work, I mean, necessarily going to differential to lag two. But immediately I differential to lag one, and I generated plot again. I saw its stability, then I move ahead to, you know, plotting, you know, to generate uh, two other plot, the ACF plot. I'm not only going to generate ACF plot; I'm going to generate both. This is a real life data. But I don't know whether it's going to be MA or AR or it's going to be a combination of that. So you can see I generated ACF plot, I generated PACF plot, and I need to interpret each of the model. And based on what, what I have in display right now, these are potential models. Is there any question about what I've what we've done so far here? Now, these are potential models. Okay, now these potential models. They want to contest for this data. Okay? They want to contest. Okay? Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to fit them individually. I'm going to start with the MA1. Okay? I want to fit an MA1. Please, I need to pay attention now. This is how to fit an MA1. Do you see the code? 001. I told you, you can see Arima. Arima can be split into three. A-R-I-M-A. So I have zero, I zero, MA one. That's why you see that. And what do I have now? Okay, because I'm going to have three modules. Okay, I will make use of the AIC later <laughs> because I have a three modules, right? Now, based on what you see here, you're going to write a feeder model. Okay, uh, you can write a feeder model. Okay, don't forget the way we normally uh, write the feeder model we've already done that for AR or AR1. Now I'm gonna to move to AR. I'm mean, sorry for I we've done for MA1. Then I want to go to AR1. Don't forget what is my what data set am I using? Difference data. You see D I F F1. Now the original ice data. The original ice data is oh uh, there's a violation of stationarity. We're using a difference data. And how, don't forget the way your feeder model is going to do, it's going to look like, you remember with the, with the way we normally write a feeder model for difference, where you have a delta Y, T, right? Okay. Now, I want to move to AR1 now, fit in the AR1. This is how, this is how, this is 100. The other MA1 was 001. This is 100, right? And we actually have the results. You also need to know how to write a feeder model. Okay, now this also come with the AIC. Now I'm gonna to go to the AR3 now. Oh, oh my God, you see AR3, 300, and that's why you're gonna have, do you see that? You see the coefficient, right? Okay, 
and also know how to write a feeder model. Now, you know what I've done right now? I've already, uh, you know, uh, estimated for each of the candidates model. Can you see that? I've already estimated a uh, parameter for each of the candidate model. Let me tell you this. To use any of the time series model, okay, absorption of stationarity must hold. If it doesn't hold, what do we do with the friends? Before using time series model at all. Does that make sense? Now we've fitted all of that. What is the next thing we want to do right now? Okay. Now, before I start comparing the AIC of the three potential models, I need to for first investigate whether the residual in each of the model behave like a white noise. Does that make sense? I need to for first do that. I need to check. Okay? Before I now start comparing. Now, I want to start for the AR1, ACF for the residual. Okay? Now, uh, what do you see? This is a white noise. Why is it a white noise? Apart from the autocorrelation at like zero that I told you is always going to be one. That's always, that's always going to be out of the blue dotted line. Every other uh, autocorrelation at any other lag is going to be zero. Okay, which means residual behave like a white noise. Okay, I also do the same for AR1. I do the same for AR3. Oh my God, do you see all of them? You know, they pass again. They pass this test again. The three models now, they, you know, before you, don't just go for AIC without checking this. Does that make sense? Now, you know what is, you know what is it's telling me now? It's telling me now for AR1, for MA1, for AR3, okay, residua in each module behave like a white noise, which is a good sign, which is a good thing that the, two, the three modules are good, but we, but we need to identify the best, okay? And that was why I said, I said, do the residual behave like a white noise? Yes, all these modules are valid, as you can see, okay? Residua behave like a white noise because apart from lag zero, autocorrelation at every other lag is within zero. They are all within the blue dotted line. Then how do we decide? Now that we've been able to investigate this, then these models are, are comparable using uh, other module selection criteria. Otherwise, if there is a violation in any of that, we would, we would remove it from the competition. Does that make sense? Before we even go to compare. This is the next thing that we're going to do. We're going to write all the modules out. We're going to write, apart from the AIC, we also, what is also important in every module is the variance of the residua. Do you know where I'm going to get this sigma square W cap? I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you in the output the sigma squared W, the estimated variance of the white noise. Okay, can you see? It? Can you see it here? Estimated, estimate uh, sigma square estimated. You can see now, right? Okay, and you see your AIC. The two are very important. The two are what we actually want to copy out. Okay, you know I told you before you can actually compare. Okay. Before a, a, a model can qualify to be here, to be in this stage where we want to compare the AIC and estimated sigma squared, then the absorption, in, you know, the residual in the model must be like a white noise. Otherwise, that particular model would be disqualified before reaching this stage at all. Does that make sense? Okay, now, right now, which one has the lowest AIC out of all the three? Which one has the lowest AIC? I'm talking about which one has the lowest here. Okay, it's the ME1, right? Okay, the, I said ME1 model has the lowest AIC and it should be preferred. The model 
with the lowest uh, AIC should be preferred, okay? And even though it does not have the lowest uh, estimated, take a look at this guy, estimated. You know, the one with the lowest estimated is AR3. But if I want to go by this, okay, I'm actually going to, I'm going to consider it because the difference is not even much. And you know another thing? This has two parameters. That's as for. What is the essence of using that one? Okay. So based on the, I know that based on the estimated uh, variance of residual, uh, you're actually going to say, oh, I'm going to go for ER3. But if you compare that with MA1, is 0 0.28 and 0 0.27 is not that far. But the uh, the household name uh, selection criteria that we normally prefer to use is the IC. Okay, and as you can see here, it means I'm actually going to prefer MA of other one. Does that make sense? Okay, now if I'm going to prefer that, then I should, whatever prediction I want to make, then I'm actually going to use the best model. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, MA1. Okay. You know, don't forget uh, the last data. Actually, you know, we, we said we are using this data from 1979 to 2018. It's a yearly data, right? Now, let's say we want to predict for 2019. That is one step, one step ahead, right? And the last data, we use 40 observations. Between 1979 and 2018, we got 40 observations. That means we want to predict for observation number 41. Because the time, the unit of time here is a uh, year. Now, I need you to pay attention right now. Do you see this guy? Predict MA. I'm using my module to make a prediction ahead. Okay? That's what I'm using. Okay? Now... This is not going to be the direct one because don't forget your data is difference. You know that? So what R is going to give you is going to be that. There are Y40. Why, why, why 40? Why, why 40 is the last use for the observation. So your data Y40 is what R is giving you. But that is not what you need. But you're going to make use of that. Don't forget, I show you that this is a difference data. Now, take a look at this now. And this is what I'm looking for. L let me tell you this. There's th this formula exists. Maybe you can write it down. Y, the uh, difference YT cap equal Y c plus one y t plus one cap minus original y t can you see that please take note of this relationship okay what you what what, what we want to predict is this guy right but this guy is the one that come with this code how you know the one that we have here okay then y40 is the original values of y in the la the last observation in our data does that make sense now uh and that will, if you if you want to get it back in r you can write ice 40 it's going to give you that data the last observation in your data okay now I'm gonna plug that start plug and, and that one is 4.7. Okay, so plugging in that now, so which means if I solve for this guy, so if if, if I solve for this guy, is this now you know what happened to predict using a difference model. This is a difference MA1. Okay, okay, it's gonna be. Y cap, whatever you want to predict, the observation 41, 
is going to be equal to delta y40. Delta y40 is when you use your model, when you use your model to make one IR prediction, then plus y40. y40 is the original values of y in your observation, the last one. Does that make sense? Now, at the end of the day, what, what, what prediction, what does it give us? 4.45. Okay? Now, you know what I want to do now? Let's assume that you have this 4.45 for MA1. And you decided, you know, we've chosen MA1, right? Let's say, for instance, we say, okay, other models are equally good because in each of them, residual behave like a white noise. Let us also look at their prediction as well. Even though I know the best model is MA1. Now, if I look, I just want you to see, to compare what this MA1, the best model predicts. And if you settle for second fiddle, okay, what the prediction is also going to look like. Now, using the AO3, okay, this is the full model. Please, do you see how I write my full model? For AR3, do you see the full model? Because they are going to have data. Don't forget you are talking about differencing. Okay. Now, we want to predict data Y40, just like the way we did the other time. Okay. Now, predicting data Y40, please, I need you to pay attention with AR3 now. Okay. I want to predict data Y40. Okay. For data y uh, 40, okay, if you take a look at what I have in the model here, if you take a look at what I have in the model, that's a ARO3, okay? Now, some of you may be wondering, how do I have all of this? Do you know, is 0 0.07? Where does it come from? I'm going to take you back to ARO3 so that you can, is 0 0.07. Now, do you see the intercept? That is the mean, mu. You remember the way we normally specified it? And is 0, 0.0, I mean, negative is 0 0.07 that you see is the mu. Then we're going to use all of this. Do you see them? All of that? Now, let, now I need you to now relate that to the way we've write the feeded model, autoregressive model of order three when differencing is involved. Do you see that now? Why do I have plus 0 0.07 plus 0 0.07? That was a negative. Because in the normal model, it's supposed to be, it's supposed to be data, data cap yt minus. So we have minus, minus, that turned to plus. That was how you see that. And in the other one, negative 0.75, negative 0.52, negative 0.36 are the coefficient that you saw in the output. Does that make sense? And in each of the parentheses, okay, you are, you're going to have, if you take a look at this, you're going to, you're going to see that the intercept is going to be like, there are yt minus one minus minus intercept. And that's why I say a plus. Now, right now, if I want to predict for yt, YT you know, I, I want to make a prediction for this. Please take note. I want to make a prediction for this. Y cap 41. My data, start, my data test stop at 40. But to make use of the AR3 model, I will need to for first uh, compute that, uh, data cap Y40. Y40, not Y41. Okay. Now, when I plug in here, when I put 40, t equal to 40, t minus 1 will be 40 minus 1, 39, 40 minus 2, 40 minus 3. Does that make sense? Now you're going to have, and that was why you have this. Do you see that? 40, 39, 38, 37. Do you see that? Okay. Now, the next thing now is I actually need. If I want to get this guy first, right, I need 
39, 38, 37. Not from the original data, from the difference data. And I can use this. You know, the other time when I was difference it to like one D I F one, right? If I write 37 to 39, you know what I mean? 37, 38, 39. Or simply I can write, I can write this. And these are the three values. Negative 0 0.09 for 37. For data, for data y thirty nine. Oh, sorry. Uh, for data y thirty seven. For data y thirty eight. For data y thirty nine. Does that make sense? Okay. Now, what is the next thing? Plug in the values. Okay. You see what I said? The other time. What each represent? Okay. For thirty seven. For thirty eight. Thirty nine. What am I going to do? I will just plug in those values in the equation and I will be able to solve for data cap y40. Because if I want to, if I want to compute y cap 41, I need a data y cap 40. Okay. Now, when I do that, so when I plug in that, I will be able to get this guy to be this. Data cap y40. After putting, after plugging this into this equation here, and I solve for that, and I should be ready to compute. And you know, uh, based on the formula, uh, let me uh, give me one second. Okay, you know, if I want to get my y cap forty one, I need a data y cap forty plus y forty, and this data y cap 40 is what I what I solve by solving the fitted module that, that, that gave me negative 0.22, right? Then I want to get y cap 41. So y cap 41 is going to be data y cap 40 plus the last observation. And if you want to have access to the last uh, observation, let me tell you this. Please, I need you to pay attention. Is there any difference in on this? No. You will check this from the original data set where you have no difference. What do I use to what 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 did it, what did it, what did, what did I use to represent the original data set that uh, that was ice, right? You remember when we started highs. So you know um, then that, that is that is four point seven one. And what happened? Now do you know do you know why I'm actually uh, trying to predict with AR three? Because if you go by the AIC, the AR, the, um, um, you know, if I, if I go by AIC, the AIC choose MA1, right? But something choose, something that choose AR3, you know what choose AR3? The estimated sigma squared. If you want to, if you want to come back here, because we have two criteria, even though we normally want to, we normally, uh, use, uh, we prefer the use of AIC. Okay, I wanted to see something now. Now, take a look at this. If I want to go by AIC, that choose MA1. If I want to go by this guy here, okay, this is choosing this. Do you see that? If I want to go by AIC, it choose MA1. If I want to go by estimated sigma square W, which is the which is the variance of the white noise, okay, that choose AL3. And that was why it's okay, let's also make a prediction with it with that. Now, when we make a prediction with MA1, okay, that give us uh, 4.45. When we now make a prediction with AR3, 